All right, let's find the surface area of this concrete seawall, excluding its bottom. And then we're going to calculate the total weight of the seawall if it's made of concrete, which has a specific weight of 150 pounds per foot cubed. All right, so do you see how this is kind of an object that is created by taking something and rotating about it about this axis right here? All right, I think this is a perfect candidate for using Theorem of Pappas and Goldenness to find the surface area and volume. Let's start with the surface area. How did we create this surface area? How did we create the surface area? We created the surface area by taking, let me try to do this in color coordinated, by taking this line right here, which would be this line, uh, taking this line right here, which would be this one, and then taking this line right here, which would be uh, this one, and, and they were specific. It says exclude its bottom. So, so we would not worry about the surface area created by that right there. But, but we would that, those three lines create the surface area. Except this is not going a full 2 pi. So it doesn't come back onto itself. So when something doesn't go a full 2 pi, then its ends are exposed. This end right here is exposed, and we don't calculate that using the theorem of Pappas and Goldenness, right? This, we take this pink line, and it creates this surface area, right? We take this blue line, and we, whoops, we take this blue line, and we rotate it, which gives us that surface area. Then we take this green line, rotate it, and we can't see that. That's kind of the back surface area that's touching the water. But we have not calculated this black surface area right here or the one at the back. We're going to do that at the ends. At the end. These are the end caps. So, so anyway, don't forget calculate the surface area of the end caps when you've got something that doesn't go a full 2 pi. You know, if it goes a full 2 pi, it comes back on itself and the ends are not exposed to the outside surface area. But if it doesn't, then don't forget those end caps. We're going to do that later. We're not going to do the end caps by Theorem of Pappas and Goldness. We're just going to do them by, you know, what we would do in, in, you know, high school, middle school, finding the area of that shape right there. Okay. But first, let's do uh, the surface area is summation of theta RLs. So this pink one would be... All right, so first of all, is it, it's not 2 pi. It is 50 degrees. What is that in radians? What is that in radians? 50 degrees. I like to do, most people do uh, pi divided by 180. I do 2 pi divided by 360 just because it, it reminds me this is a, a unit conversion. This is a, not a unit conversion. It's, kind of, it's almost like a unit conversion. It's a conversion. Uh, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Uh, so that's how I convert degrees to radians. Uh, my degrees cancel out. It's, it's almost like a unit conversion. Uh, and I'm left with radians. This would be 0.873 radians. All right, 0.8. So, so that, that's going to be the theta for all three of those lines. Right? We rotate everything 0.873 radians. And this equation has to be in radians for it to work out 0.873 radians. Now, if you're smarter than I am, you could just kind of factor that out and multiply it once, but I might do this, you know, three times for each of these. All right, theta, how about R, and now L. Uh, R, I'm going to come back to it because I think that's the hardest part. L, uh, okay, let me see here. I've got to really look right here. This length of this line would be the hypotenuse of this. Uh, it is 30 and it goes over, let's see, 15 and 8. This is 8. Uh, so doesn't that make this just 7? So 30 squared, 7 squared, take the square root. That would be the length of that line. All right. Now, the R, all right, the centroid of that line is right there. Don't think of it as a triangle. Think of it as a line, and the center of that line would be right there. The same amount of line above it and below it, the same amount of line to the left of it and to the right of it. The distance R would be the perpendicular distance from here to there. All right, well, from, let's see, from here to here would be 60. 
from here to there would be 7. Uh, do you see that this is 63.5, right? It goes 60, and then it goes halfway from here to here is 7. It goes halfway, 63.5. All right, think about that. Okay, now let's do this blue line. This blue line is 0.873 radians. I'm going to come back to the R. The length is 8, and the R is... Uh, we think about this number of ways. It is 60 to here. It is 70 to just the beginning. So it's 67 and then another 4, right? 67 plus 4, 71. 71. All right, that is my R. So I've done theta RL for that one, theta RL for that one. Let me do theta RL for the last one. 0.873. And you see how... Why you, we could just multiply, factor this out and multiply it once times this plus this plus this. Uh, and this would be, let's see, theta, r, come back to l. l is 30, and the distance r would be to there, right here to there. Perpendicular, always per, these r's are always perpendicular to my rotating axis. If my rotating axis is vertical, these r's are all horizontal r's. And it would be the full 60 and 15, 75, right there. So this would be 4166 square feet. But that's not the total surface area. I need to include this end cap right here and the end cap on the other end because they're exposed. That We don't go full 360. So the end caps plus end caps. The end caps are, what's the area of this? This is 8, this is 7, and 8, this is 30. The end caps are, um, let's see, this triangle is 1 half base times height plus base times height, and there are two end caps. All right, so add this plus this, 4856 square feet is the surface area of that right there. Whew. That was a good one. That was a good one, right? So that was the surface area. Surface area was theta RL, so I said that there are three lines that create the surface area plus these end caps, plus the end caps. All right, next. I want to find the total weight. Now, Theorem of Office of doesn't give me the total weight. It could give me the, the vo volume, right? And don't you think that ha once I have the vo volume, then I could take that with this uh, piece of uh, info that's 150 pounds per foot cubed uh, to find the uh, total weight. So let's find the volume. I, I'm not going to reuse that figure. I'm not going to reuse those R's. Let me let me redo it completely. What creates the volume? It's not lines that create the volume. It is areas that create volumes. So I would say this volume is created by taking this green triangle and this blue rectangle and rotating those. So, so where, whereas I had three lines that created the surface area, this is a completely separate problem. I've got two areas that create the volume, and the volume is going to be summation of theta r a. So, so this is going to be still 0.873. All right, and let me look at the... Um, so let me factor that out, right? This is theta times summation of R. So this is what I was talking about, how you only have to multiply this 0.873 once if you're smart about this. Let me do the RA of the green and then the RA of the blue. So the RA of the green, the R, I'm going to come back to the area is one half base times height. All right, this is 730, whoops and 8, and the R is, well, where's the centroid? The centroid is right there. 
This is 60 just to get it to here. And then break this up into 7 thirds. And so this would be 60 and 2 thirds of 7. Uh, I could write that a number of different ways, but right, I'll say that 60 plus 14 thirds. Right? 60 plus 2 thirds times 7. All right. Now let me do the blue one. Let me do the R, the A of the blue one. I'll come back to R. The A is uh, 8 by 30. All right, so it's rectangle base times height. And the R, well, where's the centroid? Don't overthink. A rectangle is just right there. Uh, 67 and plus another 4, 71. All right, 67 plus another 4 is 71. All right, so the volume would be 20,796 feet cubed, but it didn't ask for the volume, it asked for the weight, and we know that the weight is gamma V. Even if I didn't know that, I could look at the units to, to give me a big hint right there. 150 pounds per foot cubed, and we have 20,000 of those, 20,796 of those cubic feet. And this would be very large, 3.12 times 10 to the 6 pounds would be the weight right there. So let's take a step back and look at what we did for this problem and all these problems. If we see an object that's created by taking something and rotating it about some axis, we can use the Theorem of Pappas and Goldenness, and surface area is theta RL, and sum up, break this up into each distinct separate Ls that create the surface. Right, this pink line, this blue line, this green line to create the surface area, uh, and so do the theta RL for each of those. But if it's not a full 360, don't forget about the end caps. Those are surfaces, right? Those are surface areas that are open um, to the atmosphere or open, you know, to the outside that we need to calculate. So that was the surface area of those three lines plus the two end caps would be the total surface area. And then if we want to find the weight, we probably need to find the volume first and then uh, calculate weight is gamma times V to find the total weight. All right? All right, good job.